that science should be the ground state of what we're interested in, that it it's provides us a method for evaluating claims. So, you know, when I say something on the stage, like whatever I said, uh, you can question it using the tools of science. And that's good, that's what we want. And what I'm saying, though, is that to get beyond that bottom level, to get to something more, to advance human society, we also have to embrace other ideals besides science. Science is, is the tool we use to accomplish our goals. The goals we choose, we have, we're kind of left bereft here. We don't have a God telling us what our goals are. We have to decide what our goals are. And I think for most of us, we would say that goals like equality for all people, all races, all sexes, is one of those goals we should be working towards. And then we use science to figure out how to accomplish it. This is true. We are human beings, right? Human beings screw up. There are lots of atheists who aren't thinking scientifically. I've met them. They're really annoying. <laughs> and this is also true that you'll find feminists who are operating on a purely emotional level. You will find uh, you know, gay people who are operating on a purely emotional level. Uh, but I would think that you know, the, the, the effective ones, the ones who are going to advance their cause, are going to be fairly intelligent about it. And that they are going to use, you know, science as broadly defined as I put it. You know, I'm, I'm not saying you've got to put gayness under a microscope. I'm saying instead, uh, what, you, what you do is you use critical thinking, you use evaluation of the evidence, you look for patterns in behavior, and you try to decipher what's actually going on. And you, and you adjust your methods to that. So, yeah, that, of course there will be screw-ups everywhere. Uh, I think, though, that you know, what we want is, is we want to aspire to achieve the truth. The truth of feminism, the truth of gay rights, the truth of atheism. And that takes science. We don't have any other method to determine truth. No other reliable method at all. Okay, I, I refuse to separate them. <laughs> well, first of all, uh, First of all, yes, it, it is true that Obama and Biden have used their religion to justify their support for gay marriage. Uh, but you have to recognize that even Christians are going to be right every once in a while, right? They're not, they're not all uniformly wrong. Uh, you know I, know, I know Christian math teachers, and I'm not going to reject the calculus because a Christian thought it was right. Uh, same with this. That, that's a completely irrelevant argument. Um, I think what we should do is we should welcome the religious people who actually see through the delusions far enough to justify civil rights. The other point is that, uh, you know, I, I'm, I think, I think it's not very interesting to push the agenda that there is no God. It's a simple fact, it's a truth. You know, the, we don't argue much about this anymore. It's, it's more or less resolved except among certain delusional people. But we have to think about what does that mean to us as, a, as, as a, the human species? And what it means is that we're here on our own. We're all together in this. And that means I refuse to say to my brother or my sister that I'm, I'm not one with you. I'm not sharing your causes. That we have to work together. And so what I would say is that you don't have to be atheist to be gay. Right? You don't have to be gay to be an atheist, vice versa. These are, these are in a sense, very independent sorts of things. But I'm saying as, as a third wave atheist, what you have to do is have more respect for human dignity and human rights. That you have to be a, you have to fight for social justice beyond just the abstract philosophical position that there is no God. So I would say that yeah, there, there, there are always going to be atheists who disagree because that's the way we are. We're rat bastards who just can't agree with anyone, ever. That's okay. They're good. So we're going to have people who disagree. We're not going to say, okay, you don't get to be an atheist. They're still an atheist, right? But I'm saying as a movement, as a group, we need to aspire to something more than just constantly reciting that mantra, there is no God, or religion poisons everything, or whatever. We've got to do something with this cause. We've got to use these, these, these rational minds we have to do something productive and constructive in the world. And I say, social justice is a good thing to fight for.
No, I'm a terrible administrator. I hate that stuff. So no, I, I don't want to do that. Um, as for the progression of the atheist cause in the United States, I think politically we're going pretty fast right now. That, that the important thing is that the, that the youth movement is becoming increasingly godless. And I think we're going to reach a tipping point. Right now, I suspect that there are many more atheists in the United States than anyone suspects. But because of the cultural stigma, you know, admitting you're an atheist means you're a communist and we have to shoot you. Uh, because of that stigma, people aren't coming out and saying it, and they may even feel deep down that there's something really horrible and uncomfortable about the word. But that's changing. You know, we're, we're out now. We're coming out and we're saying, okay, I'm an atheist, and I haven't raped your sister and I haven't shot your dog. So get used to us, you know, we're okay people. And I, I think that there will be a tipping point I, you know, it might happen by 2050, which would fit the apocalypse, right? So that may be what they're predicting. What about Jesse Ventura? What about him? He's godless, yeah, he was already there, yeah, we already had just, but he was weird. Yeah, yeah we, we had a godless governor who actually rejected religion. Um, he did, he did not win by a majority, however, there were some other complicating things, and he was a professional wrestler, so... <sighs> and, he, and conspiracy theorists, and he made some really bad movies, so... Yeah. Well, yeah, you know, I, I do agree with you that it, it, it is a problem, but... What that means is that there was something I didn't mention in my talk that we should also emphasize, and that's education. That you need an informed citizenry for a dem democracy to work. That means we have to take Rupert Murdoch out and shoot him. <laughs> or at least shut down Fox News. You know, that we've got all these sources of disinformation operating right now. I don't know about Germany, but in the United States, we've got the Republican Party actively trying to destroy state-run education in the country. Those are forces that conspire to undercut democracy. I would agree with you 100%. Uh, we've got to somehow oppose all that. Better education, better support for students who want to go on to higher education. Uh, Fact-checking Fox News would be marvelous. There's lots of things that we should be doing. Uh, and I would think, you know, it would be wonderful if our leaders were actually setting an example, but it seems like both sides try to distort the other side as much as possible. So. Yeah, more education. That's all I say. I don't. I, I don't think that's a problem for atheism. Because I think we all support. It. <laughs> yes. What it requires is amplification. That here, there's there's a few hundred people here, right? And you're going to be listening this weekend. You're going to be learning things. Uh, if you just sit on it, you're useless to me. <laughs> what you all need to do is you need to go home and you need to come out and talk to people. Push these ideas, communicate them to your family and your friends. Uh, that what we need is more open communication that's going on. Think, you know, think of this as sort of a, a center point where you're getting all this information and then your job is to go out and radiate it to the rest of the world. So that's what you've got to do. Uh, I, I don't think we need a lot more of these sorts of sessions. What we need is more grassroots effort for these ideas to be disseminated more thoroughly. And yeah, if you've got, if you've got other talents, use them. You know, there, there are songwriters who get out there and do good music about atheism, believe it or not. Uh, yeah, and it's not Christian rock, that kind of, no, it's, it's a, <laughs> good stuff. Artists. Uh, writers, write books, do uh, whatever suits your talents. Get out there and propagate the ideas. That's how we're going to get this effect, is more of us participating. Yeah, just me standing up here. I'm one guy talking to a small bunch of people. We need the whole planet. You know, we're, we're short about seven billion people in this audience. <laughs> Of course, yeah, you know, uh, most, of the, most of the Christians I know in my little small town in Minnesota are decent, good people, I like them, they're friendly, uh, they've just got this one wacky idea in their head, 
And as long as we don't touch the wacky idea and make them explode, it's good. We can work together. And, and so, yeah, what we ought to be doing is building a community that involves everybody, not just atheists, and also tries to explain the real world to these poor, hampered, delusional people in our midst. So, yeah, it's, it's, it's all doable. I've worked with Christians. I've converted a few. <laughs>